Since we started using sunlight two years ago, it has always been such a highlight to our homeschool day and level C is no different. If you're new here, I'm Ryan, a Christ-following wife and a homeschool mom to three boys. Here we talk all things homeschool and we will learn together how to use our roles as wife, mom, teacher, and homemaker in order to glorify God. This is our second run through of sunlight and we started with B, level B, and that was the year one of world history. We are now doing level C, which is year two of world history. And it looks like this. Of course, this is in my own binder. It is, this year we went with the four day, last year we did the five day, and I just found myself scrambling to get that fifth day in. And that's why we actually started level C a little bit late is because we still had a lot of B to start with. Um, the beginning of this school year, we had to wrap up a lot of B before we moved on to C. So this year I opted for a four day and it's a lot easier to fit into our hectic schedule. This is recommended for ages eight to 10 for grades three through five. I have both a third grader and a fifth grader. They're both pretty young for their age, especially the third grader. Um, he could technically be in second grade um, and by public school standards, he should be in second grade, but um, he catches up with us just fine. And so this has been a good fit for both of them. And then we use readers for their actual grades. We have the grade five readers and the grade three readers. And C goes through and wraps up world history from about the year 1000. So we're talking like kind of the Charlemagne era and then goes through Vietnam, Cold War, Korean War, all of those more modern wars, which is obviously up until like the 80s. This is a favorite subject of both of my kids. This is what they always want to start with. Um, sometimes we start with it, sometimes we don't. It just kind of depends on if, you know, if I know they have to get their math done that day, we'll start with math or whatever. Um, but it is what they always ask for first in the day. So this is a literature-based program. So it's not just this folder, it's a whole bunch of books. Um, and I think that's why my kids like it. My kids love listening to read alouds and they always have. So I'm gonna start with a couple questions that I usually get about sunlight when people are talking to me about it. And then I will flip this around and actually let you see inside um, what a week typically looks like. So the first question I always get is, is it boring? Do they get sick of just sitting there and reading? Um, and no, they don't. I do let them do something quietly with their hands while I'm reading as long as they are quiet and they aren't disturbing one another. Um, and I know that they're actually paying attention. And with kids, you can pretty much watch and notice if they're paying attention or not. At least with my kids, it's pretty easy to see if they're off in their own little world or if they're actually focusing on what you're saying. You know, I get this question a lot. People are like, well, with breaking up, should I condense and do the B, C together? Cause you can, they have an option for that. Or should I do B and C separate? Um, I mean, obviously I think either one's gonna be fine, but even with the world history being split up amongst two years, it's not um, boring at all because just this curriculum alone, just the second part spans 900 years. A lot of history happens in 900 years. And there are so many books. It's because, you know, these are really rich stories and what books that are actually, you know, more textbook, there's a lot of pictures and there's a lot of, um, you know, question and answer. And it's just very engaging as far as you're listening to good stories and you're starting good conversations. And so no, it's not boring at all for us. And then I get asked a lot, is it time consuming? Yes. However, something I've had to remind myself, cause I'm like, oh my gosh, sunlight takes so long. It's really three subjects in one. So we're doing history, obviously. We're doing um, Bible in there and we're doing literature and technically we're doing geography too. So it's really four subjects. So if you think of it that way and the fact that we're not doing history and then Bible and then a read aloud and then geography, we're lumping those all into one subject, then no, it really doesn't take that long. Um, so it's going to feel like it takes a long time, but it's also really easy to break it up throughout the day. So right now I'm not currently doing this because my kids seem to be doing okay with me just reading it all the way through. But before what I've done is I've done like the Bible section and with our morning time. And then when we get to our science history time, then I'll do the history and geography section. And then toward the end of the day, when everyone's kind of tired after lunch, I would do the read aloud section. So you can break it up and make it seem less long, but really when you consider the fact that it's three different subjects, kind of four subjects, then it's not really that long at all. And then I get a lot of people just asking, does it work? Like you're just reading aloud. Is, are your kids actually getting anything? Are they retaining things? There's no tests. There's no worksheets. Like how, how does this work? Um, 
yeah, I find my kids do because there's comprehension questions all the time. And if there's something that I really want to hone in on, then I will start up a conversation about it. I will say, Hey, here's what happened in this war and you know, whatever we were talking about and say, what do you think of that? Do you think that was right or wrong? Or, you know, whatever conversation I think would be helpful for them at the time we start up that conversation and conversation goes a lot farther than we think with our kiddos. Um, actually letting them ask questions instead of just you saying, Oh, what year did such and such war happen? And them having to regurgitate it. I mean, there is some benefit to just fact drilling, but there's also a ton of benefit in just having those actual conversations with the kids where they get to ask you questions as well, because it helps them to really store that knowledge because they're the ones who are kind of seeking it out and being actively participating in what's going on. Plus you can always add more stuff. There's always map work. There's always timeline work, which we don't really do um, right now. We might later, but it's just, we don't do it right now. And so you can add questions, you can add tests if you want, but I'm finding right now anyway, we don't really need them. And in the upper levels that may change. And actually, I don't even know this may be set up differently in upper levels where there's more of that kind of work. Um, but I'm finding that we don't really have to do anything extra and it's working. They're retaining information. And especially because those books, like I said, are varied. And so you have more of those textbooks, but they're not the textbooks that we grew up with in public school. If you went to public school, they are um, a lot of us born books and stuff like that, that are really interactive with lots and lots of pictures, lots of timelines. And so, you know, those are interesting to them. They like to just sit and look at those. But then there's also, like I said, stories where it's not just this happened this day, this happened this date, blah, 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 blah. It is, you're investing in someone's life. I like right now we're using window on the world and it talks about different cultures and their religions and um, the missionary efforts that are going on in all these different countries. And so in those books or that book, it lets you look in on someone in particular in their life and what their life looks like in that country. Yeah, it's not boring. And so therefore they're retaining more, I feel like, because they're actually interested in it. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this around and give you kind of a peek at what a normal day would look like for us. And then I will flip it back around and say a few more things. Okay, so this is just a sample. Every day is a little bit different, um, but this is week eight. So there's always a Bible reading for the day, always. And then there's always something you're working on memorizing for the week. So this week it is the end of the Lord's Prayer. So we have been working incrementally on the Lord's Prayer. And then this is the week that we just kind of wrap it all up and say the whole thing. There's always a song to go with whatever memory verse you're working on for that week. Then here is the history and geography section. So we're going through Time Traveler where we're learning about knights and castles and kind of what life was like back then. And then three of the four days, we have a window on the world um, page where we learn about a country and kind of what their culture is like there and how they feel about Christianity and what missionary efforts are going on there. Then we have a geography song and these come from a book where there's also maps that you can color if you wish to do so but it just helps you memorize um, different landmarks and then different um, countries and um, all over the world. Then our read aloud for right now is Robin Hood. So there's a chapter of that each day. We read some from Aesop, three of the five, three of the four days. And then we read from a poem book, two of the four days. So then that's just the schedule of what you're going to do. Then there is um, Bible readings, so this just kind of breaks down what you're reading. And then, so for Time Traveler, it says what day, and then it gives you define these terms and gives you questions to answer for each day. Now this varies, sometimes there's a lot of questions, sometimes there's not as many, um, but it just depends. There's usually a lot of terms and stuff defined there. Okay, and then in a different section are all of your read aloud notes. And so sometimes there is a message to mom and dad um, kind of giving you a warning of different things that you might be seeing. Um, for instance, Robin Hood can be a little, um, not gory, but just like a little much for some kids. And so it just gives you a heads up there. There are always vocabulary words and cultural literacy words. So words that um, just kind of more pertain to this time in this setting. So this had like a big long list of words. And then there are always comprehension questions for afterward. And again, those usually end up being not just a question and answer, but more of a conversation starter. And then it gives you any map points that you might need. And you can turn to the maps 
Okay, so your, your maps are back um, in that section as well, or at least that's where we have them. Um, and so you have a states map and then, you know, all the different maps that you may need depending on where you're studying. And then there's also just this little scope and sequence. So if you want to, you know, kind of broader look of what you're learning when, um, you can look at that. Here we are at our readers. This is for my fifth grader. So week eight will stay there. He is finishing up on this week. He would be finishing up all of the above. It tells you the exact pages to read. And then on that third and fourth day, he'd be starting the donut fix. And same thing with the read alouds. There are question and answer. So I don't have to reread the book or read it for the first time to know what the answers are. The answers are here for me. Um, and then there's also cultural literacy um, and sometimes vocabulary words as well. And then here's for my third grader. You'll see it's the same setup, but just a little bit easier. So he'd be reading Secret Valley for this week, um, just one chapter a day. And then the questions is just a lot shorter section of questions. So just a couple more pieces of information that you might be interested in. Um, for the Bible, as you saw, it is just straight Bible reading for level C. I know in level B and some of the other levels, you have some sort of um, book that you're going through. This is just straight Bible, but to be honest, I like it a lot better. I really like just being able to read the Bible and discuss it and not have to um, filter through a book that I don't know that I'm going to agree with 100%. Whereas the Bible, I don't have a choice but to agree with it 100%, right? History this year, I am so far liking every book that we have gone through. And those geography songs are really helpful. Again, um, because I prefer kind of that classical model, songs are a huge part of helping us memorize things because there's a lot of stuff to be memorized when you use that classical method. Um, but songs really do help do that. And it's amazing how just playing a song in a car um, throughout the week when we go places really makes things stick in a kid's head. Even my four-year-old will start singing songs that I'm like, I didn't even know you were listening to that. And then as far as the literature picks so far, I'm loving those. Um, we've had some really interesting ones this year that my boys are really excited about because they're very kind of adventure based and they are super into that. The Aesop Fables have gone on throughout the course of the year and I really like those. It's something that we've just, you know, my kids were familiar with a few of them, but we've never just sat and read a book of Aesop Fables before. We've only just kind of picked here and there and read a few. Um, so they're enjoying those. They think they're kind of funny. And then the Cornstalks book, which is their poetry book, I'm not sure I love that book. Um, I am one, I like quirky, I like weird, I like fun, but these like, I feel like some of them are kind of going over my kids' heads and I'm having to like explain the joke to them. And you know, like if you have to explain a joke, it's no longer funny. <laughs> and so maybe it's just my kids and their senses of humor and I don't know, just stuff they don't know. But some of these things, it's like plays on words and stuff. And they're just like, why is that funny? And then some of them, I'm like, I don't even know why that's funny. Maybe I'm just dumb. But anyway, I don't love the Corn Socks book, but it takes like 30 seconds to read a poem. So, I mean, we still do it. So, spoiler alert, we will be doing Sunlight D next year. I'm super excited about that. And we will also be using their pre-K program. I'm using their um, level T, I think it's called, for my um, three-year-old. Well, he just turned four. So, three turning four, we used the um, level T this year. And we will be using pre-K next year. And next year is the D that we're using. That is American history and it's recommended for grades four through seven. So I'll have a young fourth grader um, and a sixth grader. So that should be a perfect fit or ages nine to 12 is what they recommend. And it is just a perfect fit for our family. I don't know, we like the style and it's enjoyable. Like it's one of the few things in our day that I just know is going to be enjoyable. There's enjoyable parts of all of our curriculum, but this I can guarantee is gonna be a highlight each and every day. So let me know down below, do you have any experience with sunlight? Do you have any questions about sunlight that I might be able to help answer? Um, I'm not a pro, but I've looked into this curriculum a lot because it took me several years to commit to actually doing it, but I really, really like it. Um, be on the lookout for Biblical Womanhood video coming up next. Um, I can't remember exactly what that one's gonna be about, but we also have a day in the life coming um, where I show you how I am managing somehow to get school done with a newborn and it's crazy, but it's working kind of. So if you have not subscribed, I ask that you would please do so and I will talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.